Dorset is one of the best places in the UK for wildlife, which is why I was there again in the summer. Nature is just bigger and better here, from the rock formations, such as the famous Durdle Door, to the shorelines of the many beaches. Even the grasshoppers are huge. For the large part, this is because the more southern climate is milder than the rest of the UK, the air is less polluted, and more land is protected as nature reserves. Many insects are more populous in the south of England, some of which are more at home in warmer regions of Europe. Insects also happen to be fairly easy to film using a phone, even when they are doing their best not to be. First up we have the thick-legged flower beetle, so named because it's an important pollinator and it has thick legs. Thick hind legs often indicate enlarged musculature for, say, jumping, so is that why these beetles have thick legs? The answer is no. There's a study which used high-speed photography to demonstrate that these thick legs aren't used for jumping or taking off. This wasn't too much of a surprise, because only the males of the species have these thick legs, and although these thick legs are indeed packed with muscle, it is actually all flexor muscle, which is the opposite of what you'd expect if the legs were for jumping. The stain study then introduced some males into an enclosure full of females, and, well, you can now see exactly what these thick legs are actually for, grasping the females. Next up, we have the caterpillar of the cinnabar moth. These are usually found on the ragwort plant, whose leaves are so full of toxic alkaloids that most other animals won't touch it. The caterpillars love these toxins though, because they're not harmed by them, and on the contrary, benefit from them by becoming toxic themselves. Good defence against predators. Unfortunately, these caterpillars are so voracious that they outcompete each other, even resorting to cannibalism, and so relatively few survive to pupate. I was also lucky enough to see the mayflies swarming above the rivers, my phone couldn't film them very well though, so here's just one of them. The adults only live for a day or two, which is just enough time to mate and lay eggs, then they become fish food. A visit to Dorset wouldn't be complete without some rock pooling, so here we go. Note the baby crab, but next time I shall probably bring a better camera. <laughs>